KT versus CJ, and we'll see if KT can tie this one up. The Lulu band, first off, of course, against Shy. Someday, not the most uh, stellar Lulu we've seen, so not wanting to first pick that. Just not the greatest first pick in general. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to ban Callista again on the red side or whether they will let Arrow potentially pick it and then try and take away that Rek'Sai instead. Victor, the blue side ban for KT. So still trying to control the champion pool of Coco. Coco yeah. bringing out that RA for the first time in a while. It's ban. nice to see him having a little bit more diversity. Victor banned as well. You know, Arrow is an interesting AD carry in that he seems to sort of excel on these sort of unorthodox AD carries that kind of require these weird mechanics. Like, he was a Draven Master, now apparently he's Callista, and they're going to ban the Callista out against okay. Space this time. I don't really get this, right. what's going on right here, because Callista just... First off, Space hasn't been great on it, and second off, with these nerfs, it does make it a lot harder to teamfight on the, Callista, generally speaking. Have the Korean ADCs adjusted, though? Maybe? Apparently, uh, KT and CJ think they have. Well, I don't think they have, though. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if we have a good Callista come out after this patch. Well, Maokai, so Lissandra is available this game. CJ opting for the Maokai ban instead. So a lot targeted onto Someday and Score. True. They could take the Lissandra first here. They could take the Corky first here. Could also take the Jarvan away from Ambition. I wouldn't be too surprised to see that. Uh, I'm not really sold on Jarvan as a first pick these days. It's been happening a lot, though. I mean, they don't have a jungler on their team named Swift, though, so they're less likely to do it Spirit. than some other teams. Spirit, really. Well, they don't have a jungler named Swift either. Not anymore. They, they used to. That's right. I wasn't wrong <laughs> both ways. So. <laughs> Lissandra, the first pick. There we go. And, ooh, I would love to see... Uh, Shai's uh, top lane, Kale. It was very good in the preseason, but we haven't seen it since. Yeah, I, I think they're not going to lock that in this early. Yeah, I mean, with one big AP mage already showing itself, it kind of might be setting up Shy for a Mundo pick as well, depending on how the team ends up for KT. But with that Lissandra first pick, seems like they want to go hard here. Yeah, I, it's more likely that Lissandra is going to be mid lane, though, for KT, because that's been one of Nagne's better champions. So, uh, I, I wouldn't I'd be shocked to see a Kale pick this early on, considering the flexibility of that decision, and also Kale, I mean, Shy really being the only Kale player. And even then, we haven't seen it in months. Yeah. yeah they definitely don't need to pick it first. Here we go. Ooh, Hecarim. Locked in for Shy. Someday has been playing it too, so uh, you, I think, correctly identified that Lissandra is probably going mid lane, which means that they were still looking for a top laner for Someday. Well, they can still play the Lissandra into the Hecarim with some success, of course, due to her range. Right, but this keeps the Hecarim away from Someday too. Yeah, indeed. And it does put Nagne in a generally worse position. Now, CJ still obviously could go for that Ezreal in mid lane for Coco. They could try and play that Ari once again. Uh, LeBlanc is available, actually. Oh, yeah. Which right. is quite surprising that it wasn't taken by CJ. So, Nagne, that's also a champion that's frequently banned against him. So, I think they're they're considering that at the moment, whether they want to go really hard into bursty double AP or not, and see if CJ wants to play Ari into that or Ezreal into that. You do have options. Yeah, either one would work fine. Yes. Here okay. we go. This is what I wanted to see from KT. More Lissandra, more Vi, and a Thresh, too, to aid with their engage. So they're switching yep. it up away from double AP and do heavy crowd control. And this is where I think KT has really been at their best this season. Coco mulling over that LeBlanc for the moment. And against this, what looks like this heavy engage come from KT, do you want to just take the LeBlanc away then? Because she doesn't have, you know, a ton of CC, obviously, but the damage after you've been CC yeah, is no, a scary. LeBlanc part. is still really scary on yeah. KT's composition, and also Coco will feel more comfortable escaping from some of these CC, these uh, crowd control effects on LeBlanc if he can keep his distance and make sure that he doesn't get Vi or Lissandra ulted at an inopportune moment. See, what Madlife needs to do is to just play Blitzcrank. Just play a game of Blitzcrank. Have a good time. It's going to unlock his previous Mad Life abilities, and he's going to be back. I hope so. He's we haven't be seen the Mad Life in a while. Except for on Wolf. Wolf played him once. That's true. Well, 
it will be Lee Sin, actually. So really saving that support pick right until the end of the draft. Yeah. Well, it seems like anything they can do to sort of boost Mad Life's confidence at this point is probably a good thing. So picking him into the most ideal support they can is certainly going to help. It would be interesting to see a mid in Italy. I mean, Nagna used to play a lot of that, but we don't really, or a top in Italy, I suppose, too. But haven't seen as much of that lately, certainly. Yeah, that's true. Although some players, some mid players do still play mid in Italy in it's solo queue in, in Korea. Yeah. We do see that popping up on pro players' match histories from time to time. Now, Arrow did try to play Draven once yes. this season, and it was very Play not the Riven. Good. I want to see someday play Riven again. Go <laughs> for the hard engage. No, it's going to be Nidalee. Wow. Sivir. Huh. Really weird. Okay. Usually you wouldn't take that Nidalee with as hard of an, an engage composition as we see KT attempting to run right now. And CJ, normally you would take the Morgana in response to the Thresh, but they may just be going for that hard engage once again. And these team fights should be pretty spectacular, actually, if they go for Annie. Annie Hecarim against Lissandra Vi with Sivir ults could be quite interesting, in fact. Yeah. Now, I assume this is going to be a mid Nidalee for Nagne, and he's just going to try and heal through Coco's harassment as best he can. Yeah, you can see it. I mean, Nagne played a lot of Nidalee in his previous games. We'll see if they swap it between top and bottom. They might be waiting until around 20 seconds. You can wait that long before you switch champs and champion select here. Yeah, I think that Lissandra's the better matchup for LeBlanc, obviously. You can ring a frost if she tries to yeah. distortion in on you to get some extra damage. So a lot of people do use it as a good lane up against LeBlanc and at least turning it into more of a farming situation than it otherwise could be. So someday may in fact be playing this top lane in Italy. Interesting. So KT switching things up a little bit still with plenty of heavy engage, but some champions we haven't really seen them uh, do too much before. Especially this top Nidalee for someday. I'm, I'm trying to remember if we've seen him play that yet. Yeah, it's been quite a while yeah. at the very least. And interestingly, of course, that Nidalee is, has always been good against some of these more melee-oriented top laners. Right. So I can definitely see that being a threat, at least early on, and try and make it difficult for Shy to get some CS. So the question is, will CJ actually lane swap here? Or are they going to try to go for the 2v2 that they lost so handily in the last game? Yep. Well, we'll see. KT needs to win this one. If they want to stay alive in this best of three, CJ would love to get a 2-0. After uh, their dismal performance in Poland, can they do it? It's time to get in the game and find out. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. CJ fans cheering. And the KT fans too. It's actually a, a packed house here at Yongsan Esports Stadium. <laughs> a little bit Lissandra, of harass early. Lissandra reminding us that she's Korean Lissandra and goes <laughs> every time she possibly can. She, that was just a surprise sound when LeBlanc came over the wall. She's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Getting surprised by that. Thing. Well, I mean, we talked about Sunday being uh, number four on the ladder right now, and he, he has played Nibbly more than anything any those games, but most of them have been jungle. Yeah. So it's a bit surprising. Oh, we'll see. But uh, in, in solo queue, uh, when he has played top Nibbly, been building Athenes, usually first with Sork Shoes. So just going for a little bit of sustain and MR. Yeah, lane swap for KT and CJ called that. Both ADCs throwing out wards in the bottom, then immediately recalling, moving to top lane. Yeah, so KT will get the better end of this little trade. And I'm curious as to what this AP top lane Nidalee from someday is going to bring us. Considering that he seems to have been practicing it. Oh boy. Not a ton, but some. Oh, right oh through traffic. Boy. It was Arrow the play on a Mad Life. That was really smart. Mad Life poked out right away. Arrow taking a decent amount of damage as well. Space getting hit.
quite heavily. And man, what a brawl in this 2v2 early on. That was so smart, though, putting the Nidalee trap in that brush to watch for someone coming in. They saw Mad Life immediately got a lot of damage on him. Yeah, not to mention that that Nidalee trap actually does a lot of damage. It does yeah. percent HP, yeah. so you're going to hit pretty hard with that. Now, did they get the better end of this deal? Uh, I'm not sure, just because they spent a lot of time hitting Mad Life and not space. Now, Arrow very low with his pot already burned. So really, I mean, if you can trade that damage onto an AD carry, then you're going to be in a really good situation. Arrow's going to have to play this pretty far back, actually, now that Mad Life does have his stun up. KT's lucky he doesn't have flash, because if he had flash, they could just probably straight up kill Arrow right now. Yeah. Space a bit low himself. Yeah, so actually that really not working out the best for KT, considering where the damage went hmm. onto CJ. Hitting a support with a bunch of pots, not, not maybe the best choice. It's only temporary damage. Ambition, checking this mid lane here. Nagne is going to come in from behind, but Nagne gets out with that E. Score slowly making his way onto his second buff right there. And did see Ambition just clear one side of that jungle. So can they can score make a play up here in top lane? Some days pushed up that Coming lane through the pretty river. heavily. Okay, putting a trap down to try, that's why. Yeah, we'll get seen right there after pushing forward pretty aggressively and score. Just gonna go for the Gromp right now. Going for the Gromp. That's right, gotta go for the Gromp, duh. Score knows how to go for the Gromp. <laughs> Did you teach him how to go for the Gromp? That's right. The best euphemism of all time. It is, really. Coco, only 44.4% on that LeBlanc. Bit of a surprise, considering how often it is taken away from him and how successful he was was on that champion. <laughs> kind of so we still see a high KDA, even though he has a relatively well, low, lower win rate. The win rate may not reflect his personal play. That's, right. that's the thing. Definitely feel that's the case. And he's been banned yeah. against him so many times. Oh, yeah. Nagne able to farm just fine in that mid lane. And now Arrow and Fixer recovering a bit. Arrow managed to live, regen a little bit of health. And so things are kind of more or less back to normal now. Interesting that Ambition is going for the Skirmisher Saber in this game. That's not an item we normally see in Korea. Yeah, it is a little like, bit different, isn't it? I really hope we get to see him try and play with some more aggressive duels in this game. Well, there's no time to see if he can actually get in onto either Nidalee or onto uh, onto Vi. Yeah. Well, if you're not going to be aggressive and try to fight people, you don't take Skirmisher Saber. <laughs> Come on, Ambition. Time to go for the Sweet Invades. Though he doesn't have very many wards right now. In fact, actually going uh, Boots before Sightstone. It's a little bit odd. Ah, oh, Space gets grabbed with that Death Sentence. A lot of damage. Nice play there. Space, Valkyrie's away. Uses that Summoner heal to stay alive. Probably would have gone down otherwise with that Ignite used by Fixer. I'm surprised Let's they call. didn't try and finish the, like, follow that one up. But they didn't have any wards into... Yeah. CJ's side of the map. They definitely could have gotten that kill if they decided to use heal and flash onto arrow, but well, they don't commit. They just want to push the minion wave play a little bit safely right here. I think they remembered what happened last game. They tried to uh, dive a little bit too far for kills in the bot lane, or in the duo lane, rather. Also, Shy doing really quite well uh, on Hecarim in this ranged versus melee matchup. Has that flask first just to... Help him out, allow him to take some hits in return for the CS. So you yeah. can dive in right there. That is just a pain in the butt to deal with. Yep. Not a lot you can do to stop Nidalee from doing damage like that. Look at that constant, constant pressuring Shy. Does hit six though, get his old big play coming in. Dive yeah. under the turret. Nagne coming in, the trap. Uh, oh, there we go. Shy, Onslaught of Shadows gets locked up immediately by Nagne. And that is an easy first blood for KT. And they look at how well they're transitioning this right into the dragon. Arrow yeah. already there. It seems a bit risky. Waiting to make the people. play. Well, Coco could come in and possibly. Well, he's healing a bit now. There we go. They nice. saw a death sentence. That's a lot of damage. And Nagne picks up a kill this time. Oh, they were so ready. They are doing so much with these Nidalee traps. Look at that. They hit Ambition with one now. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. Some days traps have been in the exact right place every single time. It's a very important part of playing in Italy that a lot of people uh, don't pay as much attention to is where yeah. you trap on the map because it really does affect a lot of objective control and KT they really did that very well. So what happened is after they pushed out CJ in the top lane, they shoved the tower and then went all to the bottom side of the map and chained the, really nicely chained the uh, the dive into a dragon grab in a lane swap situation without taking very much damage at all to their top lane turrets. So well, it's, it's so annoying to get hit by those two because it almost feels like hitting a Teemo Shroom because of the amount of damage it delivers to you. Not that much, but. Well, it depends on how much amount. I mean, depends it, on how much AP you have. Yeah, well, I mean, like we said, it is percent health too. So something going in onto space now, just not relenting, forcing the Valkyrie. But really, Valkyrie should only carry you away after you've died. So I don't know about that. I don't know about that ability name, Riot. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Come on, know your mythology. I think they actually just named it after. You know, uh, here's a theory for you. Go yeah. on. What's that? I think they named it Valkyrie because they're actually thinking of, like, Ride of the Valkyries from Apocalypse Now with oh, all yeah. of the helicopters. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that's coming in. That's probably right. But seriously, that, that is so ridiculously derivative, Riot. Uh, and here's Ambition. Oh, doesn't get hit with the spear. Ambition flashing. He really wants this kill, doesn't he? Someday he's like, I can't jump over this wall. No, and Ambition gets the kill. That was kind of a comical series of <laughs> events, but it results in a kill for Ambition. Was now the Valkyries will come to take him away. <laughs> was a was a decent kick, though, to crowd control him into the wall like that. It was, yeah. Got to kick the kitty. <laughs> okay. Head advice from Monte Cristo. <laughs> Get arrested for that in some states. Hopefully all of them. I would imagine. <laughs> I can think maybe, like, I don't know. Some states I could think of might not have it. Alt on to Coco getting locked up. Whoa, Vi coming in, score. Yeah, you can follow the right clone, you can get a kill. Ryze hits six too, so. I just became John Madden there for a second, I think. <laughs> you can follow the right LeBlanc clone, you can probably kill her. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Stellar commentary. <laughs> hey, John Madden coached his way to a Super Bowl. You take that back. <laughs> Dude, he's one of my favorites. <laughs> he's an inspiration. <laughs> he made the football commentary accessible to the people. That's right, and that's just what I'm trying to do, too. <laughs> accessible to the masses. I am one of the. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, this is a very interesting game so far. Somebody has been pretty mean on this Nidalee. Yeah. You know, starting to really put some damage down onto that top tier one turret and shy. Oops. Oh, Ambition. Oh. You just pretty much kept attacking that, didn't you, Ambition? <laughs> you got the blue buff. Well, that's not going to help them keep their mid lane tower up when it's already massively chunked. I don't think so. He's like, ah, I better use all my abilities really fast, so it looks like it's worth it. <laughs> oh. There we go. Yeah. Safeguard. That ward could do a lot of damage if you're not careful. He's just using it to auto faster. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, oh, 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 wow, that was almost exciting until it wasn't. <laughs> this is nice hearing you get excited for once, you know, for a moment there. Oh, score. Ambition getting knocked out. Kicks score <laughs> back into Nogne. Nogne comes through anyway with that E. Yeah, he doesn't really want to follow that one up, though, into so. the pink ward of Coco. No vision right there, and he will take a double Q the for pink. his troubles. The pink ward of Coco was the name of my 1970s psychedelic oh. band. It's space. Oh, he flashes into a wall, and that's the dead Corky. Now the Valkyries can come for him. <laughs> now it's appropriate. Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised great. he was standing in tri brush right there. Are you? Yeah, kind of. They're really pushing hard now. They're going to get at least one tower off of this. KT. They, they, they could push up mid to Madlife hanging around to try and prevent that from happening. Score gets some deep wards in. and yeah, This is really more what I wanted to see from KT tonight was this, this really hard engage style. They have looked so much more decisive when playing compositions like this. And we see that they don't have the same apparent kind of team fight anxiety or team fight indecision that we saw in that last game. Yeah. I mean, in Italy, not the best champion to play right here with this composition, but someday's doing so well in, in lane. 
I think they'll be able to make it work. Well, I mean, he's just done so much with those traps alone, I feel like, in the little skirmishes they've had that he's made that Nidalee worthwhile. The first dragon especially was very smooth. Second dragon's up in about 40 seconds now. I'm glad we're seeing some more carry top laners out of Someday as well. You know, there are certain top laners here in Korea that I feel like have been kind of trapped a bit by the meta, you know? When they should be playing a little bit more carry. There goes Win will shy play Aurelia. A prime example, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it frustrates me so much, Toa. Yeah. I just want to see Shy's Aurelia again. I miss it so much. Maybe he's given up on it. Maybe he just... He hasn't. I see him playing it in solo queue. He's oh, taunting well. me. I don't know. Pushes Nidalee back here. In the lane a bit. So big setup around Dragon. Dragon is already live. Uh, KT doesn't have really good vision control around the pit itself, but they do see several members of CJ moving around their own jungle and slowly clearing out those wards forward. Really awkward recall timing from KT. Yeah. Actually, CJ definitely has a window to go for this right now. Well, we'll see if they punish it a lot. Nagne dodging that skill shot. Uh, uh, Ping, so they know he's there. Ambition seen by that ward. Yeah, nobody really has the pinks to get this right now, though. CJ oh, Coco has, has one. Yeah. And KT has none. They went back and they didn't buy pink wards. What are they doing? <laughs> well, Shy and Ambition still have the uh, warding totems as well, too. Don't you feel like that might be a little bit late for those? Should those be switched over to sweepers yet or not? Well, well, Shy should just upgrade his into a into an upgraded greater stealth totem, right? Uh, but Ambition probably will. He needs that ward while he doesn't have Sightstone yet. He'll change it over when he has his nice. Sightstone. He needs it for the least immobility right now. Dragon being taken by CJ. Will KT decide to engage? Fixer throws out. They're going to go over the wall on the Mad Life. There's an easy kill. Meanwhile, Dragon taken by CJ. Onslaught of Shadows as Shy runs away. But that's going to be a Vi ult on Ambition flashing over the wall. Ambition flashes away. Corky taking some damage as Space tries to escape as well. Ah, score didn't connect with the Vault Breaker. So no kill on Ambition. Meanwhile, someday in a little bit of trouble. Coco making a big play from behind. Getting that solo kill on the Nidalee. I really would have held the assault and battery right there. Oh, they're going for it. They Whoa, get the hook. Oh, he got the flash that says it's flayed into the box. And Coco locked up by that W. Are they going to get him? He runs into another box wall. Goes back with the distortion. But Nagne manages to pick up the kill with the auto. That was a great play from Fixer. No kidding. Flash death sentence. Nobody takes that kind of risk anymore. <laughs> yeah, very rare to see that, but a confident hook, and that'll reel in Coco in the end. So if we take a look at this right here, nobody actually takes Fixer's Lantern. They pick off Bad Life immediately with a good Lissandra ultimate. And then right here, okay, so what should have happened right there? is somebody should have warded up on the cliff and score should have oh. assaulted and batteried space right there. They didn't have vision. You need to throw that ward up and then someday playing way too far behind gets easily picked off from Coco. And then Fixer says, hey guys, I got this. Coco tries to clear out the wave and then yeah, gets a surprise hooked by Fixer straight into that box and then constantly crowd controlled until Nagne autos him. Wow. Were the three minions worth it, Coco? Well, I think it's pretty understandable that he thought he was safe during that <laughs> circumstance. That was really Fixer just making a big play more than anything. Yeah, Fixer's Thrush, I think, has been his, his best champion so far that we've seen. But that's like saying some jungler's Lee Sin is his best champion, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty normal. Ah. Okay, then. Someday, starting to do some, starting to really stack up now. Yeah, uh, Tyr is going to be coming along nicely, and he's going to have a really good power spike when he gets that Seraph's Embrace. A lot more skirmishing ability makes it much safer to go in. And here's what we're going to see in the bottom lane, which yep. is some TPing right here. Yep. Oh, well, he didn't have TP at all, oh. it turns out. All right, well, somebody's just showing up for moral support. He showed up and was like, yeah. Uh, why is Space be trying to auto-duel with a, an Infinity Edge Sivir, but... There you go. That's the I thing. Don't know. Well, why would uh, 
Why did we see Shai's Maokai trying to auto a Morgana to death last game? This, <laughs> these are just things that are happening in this game today. W into Tormented Soil, yeah. We yep. have it. definitely not the highest caliber of play at times between these two teams. Yeah. But KT overall is doing a re uh, quite a good job in this game. Quite a good job. Arrow especially has really shown up to play in a way that he has not this season. He's been just woefully inconsistent. He's turning this one around, that's for sure. Someday, to hurl his spear into the void. He uh, hit Kha'Zix. Oh, wait, Kha'Zix is not a void guy. He hit uh, Belkaz, there we go. Ooh, space, very, very low. Looks like Mad Light's to use Tippers, but here comes the Teleport, that's right. Hawks on his shadows, there's a nice big fear. A kill onto Arrow, and now Shy tries to get Fixer behind, trying to push him back in the lane. Couldn't quite get the angle, but Ambition in here for the Execute. And he'll get out just fine. So a nice couple kills for CJ there, but they may lose a bit on this mid lane turret for it. Yeah, they invested a lot into that, and everyone on KT immediately responding cross map, starting to tear down this tier two. Shy coming out with home guards right now, so they may be able to say that. Yeah, it looks like they'll be able to keep it alive. But for they're now. getting all their towers chipped right now, really, really hard. So, KT, good response at the same time. Here comes Shy, someday on the run now. Hard to catch in Italy. And KT playing very disrespectfully, considering they knew they didn't have TP advantage. And here oh, we go. Wow, Coco, Wombo Combo. Not get away from that one. Lissandra Vi is a hell of a lot of single target damage. Yeah. As we can and see single right target there. CC. Yes. Brutal. Brutal combination, and that will eliminate Coco's wave clear. And he's. They don't have very much wave clear besides a Coco W and some rockets from Corky, so they may just lose oh. this right now. Oh, Shy, Nogne. nice lane coming in from the side. They've caught Nogne in the jungle, and he's not going to be able to make it out. Mad Life bursts it down, but he'll live for the moment, anyway. Someday hit him with a big spear. I don't know why Nogne would be standing there when he knows his ult's on cooldown. What, yeah. what does he think he's going to do with that flank in the first place? Double. There's really no threat that prevents anybody from just collapsing on him like they just did. Because he doesn't have Zonia's yet. If he had, that would have been okay if he had Zonia's right there because he could have just W'd, like blown a, a rotation of cooldowns and then Zonia'd himself and waited for his team to come in and save him. Okay. Oh, they grabbed Ambition. Wow, Ambition, can he make it out? He barely can, but the spear, oh, dodge! Ambition still very low right now at 92 health. Trying to make it out, shy over the wall with the outside of Shadows. Gets flashed though by Someday. Someday still chasing, and the spear flashed by Ambition. Fixer pops the box to try to zone a bit, but Tibbers dropped on him, shy. Still there, gets slowed down by the Thresh box. And Tibbers is going to force everyone to back off. That was a crazy series of events. Somehow, Ambition gets out. This, this game is rather, getting rather silly, Noah. It is indeed. <laughs> uh, I mean, first off, just a bad place to recall. Second off, I, I mean, everybody investing so much for that and someday trying to make these kind of stylish plays by flashing the Hecarim ult to, to get know. this spear and this kill. It's just not even worth pursuing it that far, that deep. All I need is some sausage and some delicious mashed potatoes, and I feel like we're back at IEM again. <laughs> The food right. was amazing there, by the way. Yeah, you didn't even oh. have the best of it because you didn't get to spend any time in Krakow. That's true. Well, I had some good stuff anyway, though. Actually, maybe, I don't know if that's true. That's not true. I enjoyed it. What is that? Oh, you didn't have the best food. What kind of comment is that, Monte Cristo? Come on. Because <laughs> the food in Krakow that was, was better. That was a rather pretentious thing for you to say. It's all right. It's a rather ignorant thing of you to say, so. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Well, I enjoyed the food I had. <laughs> I'll oh. leave it at that. Anyway, uh, Onslaught of Shadow's nearly back up now, so KT had a chance to actually go for this dragon before Shy's ult was available. They no longer have. And they had all of their cooldowns ready and waiting, so it will be a poke battle, or they will attempt to all in Shy. All right, sounds good to me. Flash, and there's a W big ult, and they're going to blow up Corky immediately. Fix us up for the moment. That's a double kill already for someday. Coco pushing this mid lane. He's like, good luck, guys, as Mad Life tries to make it out. 
And it looks like he will, unless Fixer has another flash death sentence in him, which it doesn't look like he has. Wow, that was a very smart engage. Crazy. From KT going in there. And they're just going to keep running towards the base. Somebody has to go defend this inhibitor right now. The CJ thought they would turn on to Dragon and just trade that tower, but instead their base is getting actively assaulted. Well, smart move by KT yeah, to say, really hey, nice. you know what? We'll give up that tier one for a tier two and an inhibitor turret. Wow. And they'll get the Dragon anyway. They so. should. Shy spent a lot of time there trying to chase someday around in the back line, and instead they figure out what's going on and make the most of it. See if they can retreat adequately right here. They have to do this really quickly, though, before CJ collapses on them. It's a bit risky. Really fast. Jai has his ult. They're going to bring Arrow in. Jai coming with that onslaught of shadows. Scoring a lot of trouble. Flashes over the wall. Someday still stuck in there for the moment. Gets hit by the W chain from Coco, and that's a kill for LeBlanc. Meanwhile, Coco coming over the wall, as is Space. CJ chasing this one. Nagne taking a lot of hits. Ooh, dodges a couple skill shots, barely makes it up for now. Fixer drops a box to try to slow people down, but Ambition comes in to pick up that kill. Coco on the hunt, gets another kill on the Nagne. Yeah. And CJ punishing that dragon yeah. really hard. Bit greedy. There was a very, very narrow time window there for KT, and they had used so much in order to get those two towers already. But it looks like CJ's not going to be able to take anything from that. So actually, KT comes out definitely with an advantage. As we can see, the uh, the dragon going over to them as well. So they got a few kills, took two towers for one in the first fight. And they got a dragon and lost a few kills in this second one. As Nagme tries to get some cues down. Space held up by the hook over the wall. He will just have to try and use his box to slow down. Shy and Ambition, and Coco, his clone goes the one way, he goes up into the jungle, and they'll be able to get that one out anyway. So, well, I think overall, though, KT, KT definitely with the edge. Well, getting that inhibitor turret bot yes. was really kind of the, the crowning achievement of that little yeah, they series got, of plays. Yeah, that's, that's pretty huge. And the fact that they got the dragon as well makes those three kills kind of... Eh. Very true. Only their second dragon, though, so it's not like there's any big pressure on the CJ as far as that goes. Yeah, that, that's true. But CJ couldn't take any more objectives off of getting those kills, so I think it's definitely in the long haul will be in KT's favor. Yeah. Well, if CJ is going to come back in this game, this would be the time to do it. This would be the time when they would do it, too. Coco getting chased, so there's a Vial on to LeBlanc. They're going to lock him up as well with that Lissandra ultimate. That's a kill. Teleport coming in, though, for Shy. Shy doing some damage to score early on, gets grabbed with the Death Sentence, and they're going to burst him down, force him to ult away from the fight. And the rest of CJ on the run. Wow. Fixer's, really. Fixer's Thresh is really good. Yeah, very, very nice response. And the Death Sentence onto Ambition. Talk about being good. Wow. Shy just got punished for that teleport so hard. Well, this is, this is uh, I think, a much more stable composition that really suits KT's style. We haven't seen a whole lot of Vi here, really only score and Bengi bringing it out, but now KT going to take a bit of a risk, go for this dragon, and they'll yank Arrow right into the pit. Yeah, and CJ not really able to punish this right now. Nobody close by, and this is going to be a Baron. Oh, or, yeah, yeah. KT gets the Baron. Nobody getting there in time. Bad Life just barely there too late. Didn't have yeah. enough backup. The score is, well, I mean, uh, Arrow, rather, getting really quite scary. This is why we saw that Lissandra ban from CJ in the first game. Nagne is really quite good on this champion. Yeah. And score, or uh, someday, rather, uh, not really sold on this top lane in Italy. It's, it was pretty good at controlling the map in the early game, but it just doesn't do much in team fights with the rest of this composition. And it's it's really dangerous to play against LeBlanc too, because Coco can punish you if he gets into the backside like we've seen yeah. on multiple occasions. Well, with no big tank on KT, it does make you a little bit worried, you know, if CJ's allowed to survive longer, you know, if Shy is able to get some more items. We'll see. I mean, KT certainly with a decent lead right now. 6,000 gold is quite a bit, but I don't know. I still, I still feel like a late game team fight could turn it around for CJ. Yeah, they 
they will have a lot of punch in the late game. Right yeah, now. I think you're right. But KT is doing a good job of closing this. Now they have Baron and an open inhib, so it should be as long as they don't get flanked too hard by CJ. They should have a decent shot. Well, with Shai's teleport down, they don't have a lot to worry about with that unless he's going to his home guard run past them. Uh, he, uh, he can, I mean, with home guard, he may be able just to run straight into them right now, too, if he wants to go back. Instead, Fixer does some good zoning with Death Sentence, and Arrow takes a shot to the face, and a Cannon Minion will actually finish off the inhibitor. Good job, Cannon Minion. KT definitely carrying their lead a lot better so far in this game. Interesting, actually. Arrow's super build. That's rather odd. Blade of the Ruin King, an item we nearly never see on Decipher. Yeah, maybe just trying to slow Hecarim down if he gets onto her, yeah. I would imagine. Seemed like that may well be the intention. Also, just not a lot of armor yet on CJ, so the late last whisper not going to hurt too much. I still think probably Bloodthirster is superior on that champion, considering with her low auto attack range, it's better often to hit harder rather than more frequently with that attack speed. She can be difficult to use, but she does have Vi and Lissandra as well to disrupt the enemy team. Yeah. I do, I think Sivir Lissandra is a very strong combination because it gives Sivir a lot more opportunities to auto considering the wide range of the slow field that it creates. CJ really wants his dragon. So far, though, they don't have a lot of vision. Scar oh. coming over the wall. Fixer grabs space, space, and a lot of trouble gets blown up completely. Someday with the arrow at the end, Nagne comes in, blocks on Coco. There's the ult after the W. Coco into the blue buff pit. Not enough. A kill for Arrow. And now KT continuing to chase here. This is exactly what they wanted to do. All that CC working so well. Mad Life just completely missed Tibbers right there, too, to yeah. initiate that. So that's why they were able to turn so quickly on a dime and make that work. He also tried to. He also tried to initiate onto Arrow, who has Spell Shield, so a bit weird. Score is going to try and take this dragon simultaneously while the rest of his team sieges down this turret. Nothing they can do. Carries are dead. Yep, that's right. And the grab on the Shy. Is he tanking up to survive this? Nope, not at all. He's really not very tanky whatsoever at this point. They'll get a second inhibitor. Oh, KT. And KT, you really see the difference between their comfort Team fighting with this composition, they've been absolutely nailing it. Yeah. Uh, they really caught out space right there after Mad Life missed Tippers, did make it easier for them to get onto him. And then Nagne immediately finding Coco and getting that ultimate down. So this 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 composition is more of KT's identity, I feel. Well, they certainly seem a lot more comfortable executing yeah, it, that's for sure. Yeah, it's it, it looks a lot better. They're not calling the wrong targets. They're not confused about when to go in and when they're not. They, they just look much more on the same page here. I feel like you really need to uh, consider keeping this thresh away from Fixer if you're CJ next <laughs> yeah. game. I tend to agree with you. He's been, he's been very good so yep. far this game on that champion. Adds another thing to really consider in the pick band, though. Since Mad Life you know, hasn't been playing as well, on that type of champion lately, you know, do they really want to use a ban on that? It's a, it's a great question. I think the Lissandra may be a bigger threat here. Um, That's the thing, you know, will Mad Life maybe be forced to play it just to keep it away? Yeah, quite, quite possible. All right, well, Fixer getting a little nervous about walking into that brush right now, which he should be. Too. Drops a ward. And they will find a pink in there as well as a green. And now they're aiming to close out this game, which shouldn't be any trouble considering their massive advantage. Yep, game number one was 35 minutes and game number two could be just as short depending on how this next uh, fight that we see. Probably gonna be shorter, out. one would think. Could be. KT much better able to carry out their laning phase lead in this one and Arrow surprisingly, Arrow and Fix are getting another edge yeah. on Space and Mad Life. That really hasn't been the case for most of the season. Space and Mad Life has been solid in the laning phase. Now, part of this is not to make excuses for CJ, but they, they really haven't been able to practice and are probably yeah. quite jet lagged right now if they're anything like the pair of us at the moment. Oh man, I am, <laughs> I am feeling it. I don't, no, I, have, I don't, I am definitely feeling it. I don't like to admit that kind of stuff very often, but yeah, I'm <laughs> feeling a little bit. 
Usually we have like a day, you know? You're the one who's the expert at casting while jet lag, though. <laughs> yeah. You've done this plenty of times. It's, I haven't done this as much. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not fun. No, it's not. Uh, the turret goes down, and Bishop tries to come in and make a play. Stun lands. Shy gets into the back lines, and Arrow trying to kite with that blade. Meanwhile, Nagne going really deep. A lot of low health members of CJ can fix or do more. He does manage to pick up a kill, and Nagne coming in now. And there is the ace. Near perfect ace. Only score going down for KT. And they are ready to close this one out. All three inhibitors down. Oh, they're just going to leave that third one, I guess. There goes the Nexus. Teleport just for funsies. And GG, KT ties up the series with a pretty resounding game two win. Nagne is a really good Lissandra player. If yes, you watch the way he played that last team fight, he got maybe like three or four people by ulting himself, slowed them down, did a massive amount of damage, and chained it straight into his Zonias, while the rest of his team was kiting out the tanks and then Fixer grabbing arrow in to finish off that last kill onto Ambition. Really nicely played by KT. You know, and we saw it too, while that was going on, Shy jumping into the back lines onto Arrow. Arrow just hits him with the blade, steps back. Yeah. Well, great game for Fixer. Really nicely played by the whole team, though. Yeah. He's the MVP in, in my heart. <laughs> I, I think he's definitely a strong candidate, especially coming in